spirit. We are all one body in Christ today. Here at First Presbyterian Church on this Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021, we are thankful that after um, uh, all the challenges and the challenges that are yet before us, we have uh, two, three households that will be uh, c committing to the life of the church today, uh, four new members by reaffirmation of faith and to celebrate the sacrament of baptism. And I see this as the gift of God today. So welcome to all of you. A couple of things, since I know there are many new faces in here today, um, we are providing bulletins. Um, we encourage you when you leave, just to either take that with you or please recycle that. Uh, also, um, with the offering today, we'll do that as we usually do during the service, but if you have a gift to offer, there's a plate at the back of the church, so instead of the deacons coming um, as they normally would, if you would just share that there. And also with communion, um, I know they've probably kept an eye on it, but our communion during these times when we are physically present in the congregation, in the sanctuary, we're using a small cup. For those who haven't used it before, there's a layer of bread at the top, that's one layer, and then there's a second layer to get to the juice. Uh, sometimes that takes a little figuring out if you haven't used it before. And for those who are gathered um, watching us virtually on Facebook Live, we encourage you to take what elements you have available that we may join in this time together. As God's people, let us be called into worship. O day of resurrection, let us shine with joy. Christ has led us from death to life. O day of resurrection, let us live with hope. Christ has led us from earth to heaven. Christ has risen from the dead. He has risen indeed. Christ has risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, this day and always. Let us pray. God of life and love, maker of all things visible and invisible, on the first day of creation you spoke, and out of chaos came life, out of darkness came light. On the first day of the week you raised Christ from the tomb, and out of death came new life. On the first day of the week, you call us to gather in Christ's name, to rejoice in the power of resurrection, and to claim your gift of new life in the Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto you, O God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen. Trusting in the power of God to make all things new, Together as the community of faith, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Almighty God, you raised Jesus from the grave and shattered the power of sin and death. But we confess that we remain captive to fear and bound to habits that hold us back from enjoying new life in Christ. Indifference deadens our hearts and we seek comfort rather than justice. We cling to hurt, resentment, and disappointment, and refuse the freedom that comes with forgiveness. Forgive us, O oh God, and restore to us the joy and renewed possibility promised to us in Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I invite you all now to a time of personal silent reflection and confession before the throne of grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ and Christ died for us. 
Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, set free by God's generous grace. Thanks be to God. This year, it is necessary to do this a little bit differently. Um, not everyone has been vaccinated yet, so we're trying to keep everyone safe and well. But we welcome today, um, as I said, from three households, one of which we, we do know, but to many, given the past year, um, but people who've been coming and part of the life of our church for some time. As you're comfortable, Mickey and Willie Arthur, if you would please stand. And Doug and Karen, if you would please stand in the back. <laughs> and uh, Andrew, uh, Jackson, Aaron, if you would bring Andy and Brooks. And John, as an elder, you're welcome to come and stand with us today. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always until the end of the age. On behalf of the session, I present Anderson Jackson Booker for the Sacrament of Baptism. Karen and Doug Cotterell and Mickey and Willie Arthur are presented to make their reaffirmation of faith, affirming the, reaffirming the baptismal covenant into which they were baptized. Doug, Karen, Mickey, Willie, and Jackson and Aaron on behalf of Andy if you would affirm these words that were made at your baptism. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, showing his love and obeying his words? Will you? Do you, members of the Church of Jesus, promise to God, Anderson, Doug, Mickey, and Willie, by word and deed, encouraging them to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of the Church? Do you? We do. We give thanks to eternal God for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order in life. We thank you, O God, for the waters of baptism into which you have received 
Doug and Karen, Mickey and Willie, and today, Anderson Jackson Booker. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death, for in it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are born by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over the water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them all, that they may have power to do your will, to continue forever in the risen life of Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, all praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Andy, can I hold you, buddy? Hey. We negotiated this. Anderson Jackson Cooper, B Booker. <laughs> Let's start over. Anderson Jackson Booker, child of the covenant. I baptize you now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God most high, bless those whom you have called. Especially let your spirit rest all his days upon Andy, that he may walk and know your name, your love, and your grace. Give him courage and strength. Keep him safe. And may he grow in beauty and wisdom all his days. And for Mickey and Willie and Karen and Doug, we give thanks for this baptism. Amen. Perfect. Good job, buddy. Normally we extend the right hand. In spirit, I welcome you all today. And our children, um, I welcome anybody to come forward, but I've got our kids on the front row and welcome the young at heart today. And my microphone's working. If it stops, let me know and I'll regroup. But today is Easter. And we celebrate by the traditions of family. We gather in fellowship. We have meals. But today I want to talk about the story we tell. And one of the things is the story we tell in this sanctuary. Now, if you were to look around, what to tell somebody? What stands out to you? What's important? Actually, I heard somebody. Go on and speak up. <laughs> There's so many things. Our stained glass windows tell stories. And on this Easter Sunday, I have to point you to the obvious one. Our windows. It's an image of Jesus emerging from the tomb, emerging from death. With the words from Scripture, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And these are important. But part of what the sanctuary tells us, too, are other stories. Now, when we look up, when confirmation, or as I've said in a sermon, we look at the roof of our church, which reminds me of, of a ship, like Noah's Ark. We can look to the windows, and we can see the Christmas story in Bethlehem. But as much as we look to the resurrection, just for a moment, look behind you, and what do you see above the door? It's the cross. And in coming together in communion, and when we celebrate the sacrament, 
we always remember the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, my mom's here today, and I'm glad about that, because one of the first things she taught us, because I grew up with a number of people who were Catholic in my family, and anybody who's seen a Catholic cross, and very appropriate, and was there was usually Jesus crucified. But in our tradition in the Presbyterian Church, we depict the cross often with Christ no longer hanging there. And it's part of our teaching that Christ has conquered death. So today, as we gather and worship, we celebrate Jesus comes to new life. But when we leave today, we look upon the cross and know the sacrifice Jesus made that we should have life and that death has been conquered. And that's awfully good news. Let us pray. God Most High, we thank you in every age for every generation as we celebrate baptism today and the beginning of new life. For on this day of resurrection, we proclaim your son Jesus, risen from the dead, that in his death and life, new life, we have a new beginning and a new hope. I ask your blessing upon all the children of all ages here. Amen. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Got caught up in my own story. But there is a very special postscript. We have an extra chapter, and I'd like to welcome a very special guest on this Easter morning. Come on out. If anybody needs a visit from the Easter Bunny, just raise your hand. <laughs> And just so you're um, all sure when you leave from this place, know the Presbyterian Church has an open door policy. We welcome everyone. Welcome, Easter Bunny. <laughs> Our text today comes to us from the gospel according to Mark. Together, let us listen for God's word to us. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, 
and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God most high, on this holiest and highest celebration of the church, the day of resurrection, we come to you. Break open our hearts of stone, just as the tomb itself was open, that we may perceive and understand your word given to us in Jesus Christ, to understand how your word has been fulfilled for us. Help us to hear good news. And I pray now your servant would be reduced, that the word should increase for us all in Jesus, who died and lives again for our salvation. Amen. I'll make a confession up front. I probably came up with the best title that any congregation would ever want. I don't know about the sermon, but short and sweet. <laughs> and that's our message today. Because Easter itself, Christ rising from the tomb, being given new life, that we should have new life, is what the message is all about. On every other day, every other moment of the year. But this is such a strange gospel text. When I'm teaching on Bible in Bible studies and working with our different groups of people, I always point out that of the four gospel accounts, Mark is the oldest, and in its original form, written in its poor uh, Greek, that it ends in such a strange place. Now, many of you open your Bible and you'll find that there are extensions, there are later translations and, and later uh, copies of the text that add on. But the book of Mark in its original form ends on this note. They were afraid. They were afraid. And for us as Christians, especially 2,000 years later, that's a strange place to end the message, especially when we encounter throughout Scripture time and again that angels come to the people of God, emissaries, Jesus himself comes and says, do not be afraid, fear not. You know, those are the words we have wanted to hear, especially in the past year, not to be ruled by fear, to use wisdom, to use caution. Even as people are still being vaccinated and we're trying to discover slowly what it means to integrate into some sense of normalcy, you're all wearing many, you know, I'm looking out, you're wearing masks today, we're social distancing, um, we're in a state of flux. And potentially there's fear with the uncertainty and that's exactly where those people were when they got to the tomb, the women got to the tomb. Jesus was no longer there. They didn't know if somebody had come and stolen the body they didn't know what had happened. They just knew the stone was rolled away and Jesus was not there. And then an angelic messenger. Who are you looking for? Why are you looking here? Jesus told you in faith what would happen. But they're afraid. They're anxious. They're uncertain. How many of us here have not had moments, especially in this past year that we have not shared those moments. Now, this is the short form, the shortest gospel, 
we just end. And so a better title instead of short and sweet might simply be, well, what now? What next? That might be the question the disciples are asking. Should we run? Should we escape? Will we be arrested? Will we suffer? And that does come in other stories that come later. Today, an empty tomb carved out of limestone rock does not seem like much until we perceive with the eyes and ears of faith that the empty tomb for us is that death itself has been emptied of its power. Indeed, all things of this earth, arrogance, pride, wealth, oppression, all those things have been emptied of their power. None of it has any meaning anymore. Their reign is over. Death's reign is over in our lives. And the kingdom of God is breaking in among us. In the carpenter's son, Jesus, and God's son, Jesus, Jesus, in the words of Paul, has emptied himself out completely. He's emptied himself out for others, not any others, you and me. God has given all of himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, though he could call 12 legions of angels down, as we heard the other night in the Monday Thursday service, as he could call those legions of angels down, he became of his own will and submission a servant of servants, a slave of slaves to others, even to death on a cross, falsely accused. An innocent man who sheds blood for the life of others, for his followers, for the believers, for the disciples, for friends and family, but now on this Easter morning, as we look at an empty tomb and don't know what to make of it, we say, well, what next? These are all the questions we've been asking in a time of crisis. Ten years ago, before any of the circumstances we faced in the past year, a psychologist was writing for Psychology Today an article that looks quite innocent when we consider what we've been through the last year. Marsha Reynolds, she says, the truth is, is that any time we're experiencing anxiety and uncertainty that we are afraid, even like these women, the people who see this tomb, we're experiencing a life transformation. Physiologically, the brain registers these early station, stages of to this transformation as a crisis. We're left in a panic, each of us, all we like sheep, have gone our own way. We struggle to rise above the anger for expectations we didn't even realize we had. We struggle to rise above our disappointments for all that has ended. And we struggle with our fear of an unknown future. And that's what the women encountering an empty tomb, the people who see an empty tomb are afraid of. What next? What about our future? We're asking ourselves in this moment of crisis, who am I? What is my purpose now? What am I supposed to fulfill? What is my destiny? What is my fate? What will it take for me simply to feel content and satisfied again? Stir these questions up with all the circumstances going on in the community around us and society, an unstable economy, the loss of a job, the loss of a spouse or a family member, a parent. And it feels like breakdown is just around the corner or maybe what you and I will go home to today we are afraid at the empty tomb. Can you relate on some level at some moment? Easter morning today is so much more. It is so much more. 
Andy's been given a new name. His parents have given him, him up for adoption into the household of God as they themselves were given up and gave themselves up. New allegiances, new priorities for our waking and living. We're experiencing disconnects, disconnects with a past that no longer has any meaning, the traditions and practices of daily life that no longer seem relevant or even valuable to us. Our relationships change because of this Easter morning in this empty tomb. Are you in crisis or are you in transformation? Do things look the same today because of Easter? Are you witnessing your own transfiguration in Christ? So what next? I think the answer is simply this. Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Amen. I invite you to share with me now the words of the Nicene Creed. It's printed on the back of the bulletin. That together we affirm with the church in all places and times. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and we believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, 
scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as jesus died the wrath of god was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ i live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no human plan, can ever pluck me from his hand, Till he up returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I stand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand, till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I stand. From north and south and east and west, we are all welcomed at the Lord's table. We give thanks that Jesus calls us. All who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are welcome to gather at this table, for it is an open table to receive all who seek grace and mercy. Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift up our hearts to you, for you are blessed, who with your word and your Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus who now reigns eternally with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us people of a new covenant with a new name, a new identity, and a new beginning. We pray for the world, the church, and this your community of the faith. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread give thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup 
and gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, so that we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed in his blood until Christ comes again in final victory, and we feast at this table forever and ever. And we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And Jesus among his friends took bread and he broke it after he blessed it and he gave it to them and said take eat this is my body and at the table with them he poured wine into the cup and presented it to them and said this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood this blood is shed for the forgiveness of our sins together brothers and sisters let us come to the table of the Lord and share in the body and blood of Christ. Let us pray. Holy One of Israel, we remember through the ages how you made covenant with your people, calling women and men of faith to come and bear the covenant, the promise of good news and of salvation, wherever they went in your name. We come to you this day seeking this gift of salvation offered freely to us in Jesus, nourished at this table in bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, we give thanks for this good news that we may go no longer in fear, but in hope of the resurrection. And we offer our blessing in prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. In thanksgiving, we come to God to present ourselves for the word shared and proclaimed among us, for the gift of forgiveness as we confess and turn to God. As we begin our journey and continue through Holy Week today on this Easter Sunday, we remember all that Jesus had faced. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we offer our gifts in your name. Compared with the gift you give for our sakes, what we can offer seems so small. Bless our gifts with your love so that they have power to accomplish more than we can even imagine for your sake. Receive our humble thanks and bless our lives too so that what we do and say will show we have the commitment to follow you, whatever the cost. Amen.
we give thanks that God has given us the gift of life, the gift of his son Jesus. This is our good news. Go into the world, peace be with you, and do not be afraid. And share this hope, this faith, this love with all you encounter. And may the Lord bless us and keep us. May God be kind and gracious unto us. May the Lord us with favor and give us peace now and forevermore. And together as the children of God, we say, Amen.